Hi everyone, we are back with another Costco video. I'm so excited, I love Costco. <laughs> it's been a while, probably around six months since my last one and they've added a lot of new stuff for us to try. You guys know we found a lot of goodies in the past Costco videos from sushi to boba to dumplings to ramen to udon. Literally, I think we've tried like 40 or 50 plus Costco Asian foods on this channel. So definitely make sure you go watch those. If you guys like these Costco videos, make sure to hit that thumbs up. Also quick shout out to Native for sponsoring today's video and let's go to Costco. Spotted samples, so we are on our way. So first up, we're gonna try this Snapdragon Miso Ramen. It's a rich miso flavored noodle soup. I've never tried this brand's ramen before. I've tried their pho in a previous Costco video, but I'm excited to see what their ramen is all about. It comes with eight little cups like this and you can prepare it either by kettle or the microwave. We're gonna do the kettle version. So open the lid halfway and remove the packets, add the veggies and seasoning packets, add hot water to the fill line, close the lid and wait three minutes, add the flavoring oil, stir well and enjoy. All right, here we have our final product. Look at those noodles. Oh my gosh, they look so good. And they smell super, super savory. Whoa, the noodle texture is so interesting. It's like fluffy, kind of springy, but also very soft at the same time. So interesting. I personally like my ramen noodles to be chewier, although of course this is instant ramen. So usually it's harder to achieve that texture. But yeah, even these do have like some sort of satisfying slurpability to them. I will say though that these noodles don't really do a great job of soaking up that flavor of the broth. So let me try some of the broth on its own. Hmm. It has a good amount of flavor. You definitely get a savory umami flavor to it. I wouldn't necessarily say that it tastes super like miso though. It just tastes like a savory broth. Overall for this one, I don't know if I'd get it again. I mean, there's so many different instant noodles that you can get at Costco. So this one wouldn't stand out to me as one that you have to get. However, I did pick up another ramen for us to try. This is Nongshim's Tan Tan Men Ramen with Chili Oil. I personally love Nongshim. Shin Ramen is one of my favorites. And I remember when we tried their Tonkotsu one, it was pretty good. It comes with six of these bowls and you can either prepare it in the microwave or using hot water. So we open the lid halfway, remove chili oil packet and add soup base. Pour hot water up to the inside line. Close the lid for four minutes, stir in chili oil and serve. All right, here we have our prepared Nongshim Tan Tan Men and the noodles look so springy. Look at that. Actually, I wanna try this thing I saw on TikTok where you take the lid of the ramen and you fold it in half and then you fold it again into quarters. So then you can grab some of your ramen and you can use it as a little bowl while you slurp your ramen. Mm. Wait, why is that actually so genius? <laughs> Mm, I love this. These noodles have more of a chew and a bounce to them than the previous ones. Although they are kind of soft and spongy too. These do a decent job of picking up the flavor of the broth and it definitely has a little bit of a kick. I wouldn't say it's as spicy as Shin Ramen, like the red packet, but I do get a chili oil flavor in here for sure. Let's try some of that broth. Mmm, yeah, it's so warm and comforting and it is very flavorful. I do get like a savory umami flavor in here as well. Ooh. All this ramen has got me sweating. So good thing I have my native deodorants to keep me feeling and smelling fresh. And thank you again to Native for sponsoring today's video. The first time I used one of Native's deodorants, I couldn't believe how smooth and comfortable they were to apply. On top of that, these are some of the best smelling deodorants that I've ever come across. Some of my favorite scents are the Sweet Peach and Nectar, which I use when I wanna smell fruity and delicious, the Jasmine and Cedar for when I wanna smell clean and fresh, and the Blackberry and Green Tea, which Bird literally says makes me smell like a boba drink. So I'm gonna use this one today because it seems fitting. These are so great because they dry quickly and don't get sticky and provide 72 hour protection. They're also aluminum free, paraben free, vegan, cruelty free, and use simple yet effective ingredients like coconut oil and shea butter. Native recently released their candy shop collection and I have been loving their Sour Berry Belts body wash. Oh. 
It smells so good. It literally smells exactly like the candy, and we all know that blue candy is the superior candy. So check out Native with the link in the description and use my code MEIMEI for 20% off your first order. This discount is only available for a limited time, so make sure to click that link below. Next step, we have this BBGO Korean style crunchy chicken with sweet and spicy sauce. So first, we set the air fryer to 390, remove frozen sauce pouch and warm up in a bowl of hot water, place chicken inside air fryer basket in a single layer, cook chicken in air fryer for 16 minutes, remove and let stand for one minute. Place chicken into a bowl and pour sauce over top and toss until lightly coated. Okay, we have our Korean crunchy fried chicken. Literally, the aroma of the chicken filled the entire house. It smells absolutely amazing. And the chicken sounds so crunchy. Do you hear how crispy that sounds? I literally can't wait any longer. Let's give it a try. Mm, so crunchy. Even with the sauce on it, it still maintains a crunch. I think another way you could eat this to make it even crunchier is if you just keep the chicken and the sauce separate and then before you eat it, just dip it in the sauce and then just eat it. That I think would be the way to get the maximum level of crunch if you're into that kind of texture. But yeah, this is really good. I definitely see why they call it Korean crunchy chicken rather than like Korean crispy chicken because I do feel like it has more of a crunch than a crisp, if that makes sense. The chicken isn't the juiciest chicken. It is a little bit dry, but the sauce really helps with that. It helps Helps moisten it back up and the sauce is really really tasty you definitely get the sweetness in there and a hint of spiciness it's not super spicy or anything so if you can't handle spice that well i wouldn't be too scared of this next up we have this lan fi silky milk tea this is what it looks like and they come in a pack of eight and on the product they have this logo from this really famous milk tea place in hong kong i personally have not tried them in hong kong so i won't be able to do an exact comparison but i also wonder if this brand is really affiliated with that place because there are these boba products that try to affiliate themselves with a famous boba place when they're not actually affiliated it's like some kind of tricky marketing thing so yeah i'm not 100 percent sure if it really is affiliated with the hong kong place but regardless we're gonna give it a try see if it's any good and on here it says it's best served cold so i have a little cup of ice and then of course we're using our free mame glass boba strout link will be in the description as always let's give this a good stir Honestly, not terrible. It does taste very much like Hong Kong style milk tea because it does have a pretty strong tea flavor. And then you get that flavor of the condensed milk. It's also not too sweet. Like a lot of the times these canned boba products or bottled boba products, they're like insanely sweet, but this one, it's not too sweet. And I think what really helps it too is that it has such a strong tea flavor. You know, I do have to say though, the more I drink it and the more the ice melts, the more diluted it's becoming and less strong on the tea flavor. So I think the best way to drink this is to stick them in the fridge that way they're already cold and then you don't have to add ice and then you'll still get a really strong tea flavor i had quite low expectations as i usually do when we try these instant boba products and things like that and you guys know i have tried so many of those some of them have worked out some of them haven't but yeah for like an already made drink that you can just open up and drink it right away this is not bad and this would actually be really good with some boba too next step we have these portuguese egg tarts and i know i know portugal is not in asia don't come for me yet however although they are different to hong kong style egg tarts. Portuguese egg tarts, also known as potat, are still really popular in some parts of Asia, such as Macau, and a lot of Asian bakeries also sell Portuguese egg tarts. One of my favorites being Mr. Bread in San Francisco. Their Portuguese egg tarts are always hot and fresh. Literally, chef's kiss. Also, how could I walk past these in Costco and not try them? I'm sure a lot of you guys are curious about them like I am, so I'm here to review them for you guys. On the box, it even says authentically made in Portugal, so I'm super excited. Oh my gosh, look at those egg tarts. These look absolutely beautiful, and we're just gonna pop them in the air fryer, preheat the air fryer to 375, place the tarts in their aluminum molds directly on a baking tray on the middle rack. Air fry for nine to 12 minutes or until desired crispiness. Remove the tarts from the air fryer and allow them to cool before you enjoy them. You guys, literally look how glorious these look. I cannot believe you can buy these at Costco and just pop them in the air fryer. I mean, I haven't tried them yet, but just by how it looks, how it smells in here, I'm freaking excited. Ah, let's give it a try. Mmm, wow, it's so incredibly flaky. Has a really nice crisp on the outside. The crust is just like perfectly light and crispy and flaky. It pairs perfectly with that creamy custard on the inside. Surprisingly, these are not too sweet. I expected them to be sweeter, but I'm actually pleasantly surprised because it's like a perfect amount of like light sweetness to it. Wow, I'm genuinely impressed. The flaky crust paired with that creamy custard in the middle is just a match made in heaven. This might be one of my favorite Costco desserts from the frozen section that we've tried. So 
needless to say, I'm super, super impressed by these egg tarts. Next up, we have this G7 3-in-1 Vietnamese coffee. And this is an instant coffee, so to enjoy it hot, you just empty one packet into a cup, pour 75 milliliters of hot water, stir well, and enjoy. It smells pretty strong from what I can tell, and the liquid is quite low, so I'm assuming that's because it's really, really strong like Vietnamese coffee usually is. So let's give it a try. Mmm. Oh, it's not bad. I mean, is it as strong as when I order Vietnamese coffee from like a coffee shop or a boba shop or a Vietnamese restaurant? I would still say no, but it is decently strong. It's just not as strong as those places. I'm also guessing if you want it to be stronger, you can always add less of the water. But yeah, it's not bad. It has a strong coffee flavor and it has a sweetness. Usually Vietnamese coffee has condensed milk as the sweetener and you do kind of get a subtle hint of that flavor. So yeah, this is not bad for like an instant coffee you can make in literally like a minute. To enjoy it cold, we empty two packets into a cup, pour 50 milliliters of of hot water and stir well. Add 100 grams of ice and enjoy. Let's go ahead and try the iced version. It looks pretty good. It's okay. The ones from the Vietnamese restaurants are definitely stronger, but I feel like this is a good option if you're just literally looking for something super easy, super quick. You need your coffee like right away. I feel like this is good enough, but of course, if you're looking for more of an authentic Vietnamese coffee, then I would recommend going to a Vietnamese restaurant or something like that. It's not as strong and sweet as Vietnamese coffee that I'm used to having, but it kind of gets the job done, you know? Next up, we're going to try these Choco Churro Turtle Chips. If you're unfamiliar with turtle chips, they're basically like these little snacks that have four layers, which allows it to have this really satisfying crunch and I believe the original flavor of turtle chips is their sweet corn flavor but I've never tried one of their dessert ones before so I'm so excited about this it literally smells like a bakery it's like a sweet smell of chocolate and cinnamon together you can see those four layers in there and it looks like it's coated in some chocolate let's give it a try mm, oh my god I may have just found my new favorite sweet snack. These are so good. They still deliver on that really satisfying crunch that turtle chips usually have, but also it has a very thin layer of chocolate. Originally, I thought they would just put like chocolate powder on it, but it actually has like real chocolate on it, but it's just the perfect amount. So that way it's not too heavy either. Like it's still really light and satisfying. That mixed with the cinnamon flavor too, it's literally the perfect combination. I like these ones better than the original sweet corn flavor. I'm telling you guys, if you see these Choco Churro Turtle Chips at Costco, definitely grab a bag or maybe two. So good. Next up, we have this on the street foods kimchi fried rice with chicken. To heat it up, we preheat a nonstick pan on high, open kimchi fried rice pouch and empty contents into the pan, stir fry for three to five minutes or until hot and enjoy. All right, so here we have our bowl of kimchi fried rice and immediately I'm noticing that it has more of like a wet, maybe like sticky type of texture. Also, I always get questions on my wooden spoons, so I'll link them in the description box for you guys in case you're interested. I see lots of kimchi in here as well as some chicken chunks, peas, carrots. So let's give it a try. Hmm. I think the first thing that I noticed was definitely the texture that I was mentioning before. It is more of that like wet kind of texture. There's just a lot of moisture in here and I don't really prefer my fried rice that way. However, it has a really nice kimchi flavor. It's like acidic, spicy, and the kimchi adds this nice crunch to it. Overall, while I do think that it has really good flavor, I personally don't think I would get this again. I just don't like all the moisture in the fried rice. The chicken is kind of dry and I think there's better kimchi fried rice products out there. I remember when I tried the Trader Joe's kimchi fried fried rice in my Trader Joe's Asian food video. I liked that one a lot more. So I personally would skip this next time. Next up, we have some Indian items to try. So here we have Suki's chicken coconut curry with mango. It's tender white chicken in a creamy spiced coconut sauce. And this brand, I've tried their chicken tikka masala and I believe their samosas are this brand as well. But yeah, to prepare this, we remove paper sleeve and empty bag in a medium sized saucepan. Cover and heat on medium heat for five to seven minutes or until hot. While that's cooking, we're also gonna try the Stonefire non dippers. For these, we just bake at 400 for one minute and I'm gonna use the bake function on my air fryer. All right, so here we have our chicken curry and we have our little non dippers to go with them. I thought this would be the perfect pairing. So let's give this a good dip. I'm gonna get a piece of that chicken. Mmm. Wow, that curry is so flavorful. It's not really spicy, but it has so much rich curry flavor and the chicken is nice and tender as well. Sometimes when I buy these already made chicken dishes, I worry that the chicken will be dry, but this, the chicken is so tender. Paired with that pillowy naan, they really balance each other out because the curry is just so rich in flavor. It's thick, it's creamy, and the naan is the perfect vehicle to soak it right up. I wasn't quite sure how I would like this because it says that it's a chicken coconut curry with mango, but I'm not really getting that mango 
mango flavors. So regardless, it is delicious. Next up, we have these Bibigo steamed soup dumplings, beef pho flavor. I'm speechless. I don't even know what to say. I've never had pho soup dumplings before, but pho and soup dumplings are two of my favorite things. So I'm so excited about this. They're juicy, savory dumplings filled with pho flavored broth, beef, and vegetables. And all you have to do is cut the corner of the bag, place the package directly into the microwave and heat on high for two minutes. Let sit for one minute before removing from the microwave. Carefully open the bag. Enjoy dumplings with sauce on the tray or on a plate. All right, here we have our pho soup dumplings. Honestly, they do smell like pho. The smell is just getting me more more excited, so let's give it a try. Wait, that's really good. It's so juicy on the inside and the pho broth has that rich beef flavor. You also get those spices coming through. Like you can definitely taste the star anise in there. Is it star anise or star anise? Comment below, do you say star anise or star anise? It's literally like a flavor explosion in your mouth. When you chew down on the dumplings, the skin actually has a nice little bite to it. And then all the soup just bursts out. Like it's so juicy inside these dumplings. I didn't know what to expect, but given that I love the other Bibigo soup dumplings, like the ones that you put in the microwave, it's actually not a surprise that I'm a fan of these. Very convenient, very flavorful, definitely would recommend giving it a try. Next we have another Bibigo dumpling. These are the chicken and vegetable steamed dumplings and these pretty much have the same microwave instructions. The only difference is that we're not gonna cut or tear the bag. Okay so here we have our steamed chicken and vegetable dumplings. They literally look the exact same as the pho dumplings from the outside but let's give it a try. Mmm. Even though these aren't soup dumplings, they still have so much juice inside of them. Like maybe it doesn't have as much juice as the soup dumplings, but they are still mighty juicy inside. The chicken and vegetable filling is really nice. It has a savory flavor and you do get the flavor and the textures of the chicken and the vegetables in there. These are honestly really, really good too. I mean, I do think I still prefer the pho ones, but these are a close second. Run, don't walk to get these at Costco. They're so good. All right, so that's it for today's Costco Asian food video. Comment below, what was your favorite item from the video? And also let me know if there's any Costco Asian foods that I haven't tried yet that you want me to review. Don't forget to hit that like button because it really helps the channel out. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!